e prima verrà svegliatevi bambine oh the wonderful sound of music when i was growing up in busoler the town that i was born in the windows were all open and everybody had their radio on the same channel and the same song permeated the whole town but not only the song the wonderful smells of sugo and ragu and i can't say that i can teach you how to sing but I surely can show you how to make a great ragu, so stay tuned. I came here, I was 12 years old, and I had the opportunity to become fully American, to understand fully the American culture, to always maintain my Italian culture very strongly. And I think what gives me the strength of communicating to you and is that I have this passion for food, but I also have this understanding of two cultures and I bring them together through food at our table. Che bellezza! Buongiorno! It's Sunday morning and you're stretching in bed, you're waking up. And you're waking up to this wonderful aroma seeping under your door, through your window. I'm sure those of you that lived close to somebody that's Italian, this is what Sunday morning smelt like. And for Italians, Sunday is sacred, you go to church, but also the family gathers around the table. And the family gathers around a big pot of ragu. Here I have some garlic, onion, and olive oil going. Okay, so let's start with the bracciola, which takes the longest to cook, while the onions are sort of simmering away. Um, piece of beef doesn't necessarily need to be the best cut because this will cook and will really break actually you need something that has that's a little tough and this is piece of the chuck or the leg of the beef nice and fresh you want to cut thin so you don't have to pound away as much out of this you know they they, they would make also whole big bracciolas and then you slice them with the egg the whole egg in the middle but i think i'll make smaller ones so that are individual portions let me just And in this case, since it's a tough meat, uh, I like veal to pound veal with this side so it doesn't really break up the meat. But this is tough. You can see that it has the veins and all that. So the, the, the side with the dentals is fine for this. And when you bang, you sort of bang away from, from you. And in a, most of the cases when I pound meat, whether it be chicken breast or veal, I put the clear paper. In this case, this meat can take it. it it's not necessary. Okay, these are two. Two nice bracciola will come out of that. Let's start with the stuffing of bracciola. And, you know, stuffings and cooking, a lot of things are personal. Uh, a lot of uh, the recipes call for um, breadcrumbs. I like putting in day old bread soaked in milk, sort of straining it very well because it, it really leaves the filling very moist. Uh, if you put breadcrumbs, sometimes the breadcrumbs take the juice from, from the meat uh, and becomes a little dry. So milk, uh, bread soaked with milk really remains, it's flavorful and it remains nice and soft in the center. Okay. Okay. To this I'll add some parsley. some raisin, and you can dark raisin or golden raisin, uh, some pignoli nuts toasted, toast them first just in a pan to bring out the oils and the flavoring. Um, again, in the bracciola, sometimes you see the whole egg. I choose, since the bracciolas are smaller, I choose to chop a cooked egg. Salt, parmigiano, and just get your hands right in there and amalgamate it all together. So I need to make a roll, thin slice of prosciutto, and not that much, 
very, very thin slice is plenty. With the back of the knife, just tap it so it adheres to the meat. Okay. And then some people like to put the stuffing all here. I like to spread it around a little bit. So as you're cutting into the meat, the stuffing permeates the whole roll. If you're not able to get provola, you could put a little provolone, but you could also put a piece of mozzarella because that's basically the precursor to this. Okay. And again, not too much, you know, um, just enough, just enough to flavor it. Sometimes in cooking, we, we, we tend to put a lot because we want to. No, it's, it's the balance. You just need enough for flavoring. One twist, and then just pull the sides in a little bit. Let's give it a good twist. And then you put, pull the sides in a little bit, but not too much. Because even if, if a little bit of the filling comes out, it's fine. And the sauce goes in, it's fine. You want that. You want the sauce to seep in. And as you're rolling it, just pull it towards you. And basically, it sticks together. To seal this, just take a toothpick and puncture the flap. The rest will stay together tight. I'm going to season it just a little bit. And we're going to brown them with the onion and the garlic. And you want to turn them a mild heat. You don't want the onions or the garlic to burn in the same time you want the meat to caramelize. Turn them gently on all sides. So this is caramelized nice. At this point, we'll put some red wine. You want the um, alcohol to dissipate. I have some tomatoes, and these are peeled tomatoes, plum tomatoes from a can. If you have wonderful ripe tomatoes, are wonderful, but canned tomatoes are much better than unripened fresh tomatoes. And I pass them through a mill. Uh, you can uh, work them in the food presser or just pulsating, pulsating them lightly uh, because I want the, the, the sauce to be fairly smooth. Do you hear? You know, you, you use all of your senses in cooking. Uh, you, I see that it's got to get into the caramelization point, but I also hear it. You hear the crackling? That means that the water is sort of dissipating. You're really, the food is really beginning to cook. So pay attention, even if you're on the other side of the kitchen, let your ear be an indication that you need to come back to the pot. Yeah. Tomato paste. Uh, tomato paste needs to be cooked a little longer. Since it is tomatoes, they're not cooked. They're just out there dried by the sun traditionally. Although today maybe uh, they might be uh, cooking them a little bit, uh, reducing them a little bit. But I like to cook my tomato sauce for a tomato paste for at least 45 minutes to an hour in the sauce. But here it will cook for three hours, so we're really safe. Now let me put all the seasoning in here so I can let it simmer and go on to the, to the meatballs. I'll put some bay leaves in here. Uh, dry bay leaves are fine. Fresh bay leaves are much more intense than dry uh, bay leaves. So if you're using fresh, just use half of that. A little peperoncino. And I have here some water boiling for the pasta eventually, but I'm going to just add on boiling water to this. You know, you say you don't need stock, you don't need anything. You want to keep it pure. You want the flavor of the tomatoes, 
and the meat that's going to go in it, and you're going to have plenty of flavor. So just hot water is fine. And periodically, you're going to have to add hot water to the sauce until at the end, you'll see the concentration after about three, three and a half hour, the oil floating on the top and the sauce really being concentrated and wonderful. And we're just about an hour into the sauce, and you can already see the density. It's almost like a little volcano bubbling away. And uh, uh, we're going to continue to add things to it. Now, we are entering the Italian-American realm here, the sausages. And sausages and bracciola and the meatballs that we'll be adding would not be found in a traditional ragu in Italy. Uh, but I guess when they came here, they found this abundance of meat, and meat meant wealth, l living well. And they just kept on adding it to this wonderful Sunday ragu to show that they, can, that they are living well, that they are well off in this new land. So let's do as those Italian-Americans. Today is the Italian-American ragu, the one that you remember. Let me just puncture a little bit the sausages. The sausages are uh, uh, sweet sausages. Uh, they don't have the, the fennel seed or the anise seed because I don't want to add another element of flavor in here. I am just puncturing them because I want this sort of some of the sauce of the sausages to come out, the flavor, and some of the sauce of the ragu to go in. And just put them right in and let them simmer. While the sausages and the bracciola are braising, we're ready to make the meatballs. Uh, and let's season this. I have pork meat and beef. Uh, you can make it all pork. I think mixing it really gives it a nice flavor. All pork is fine, or all beef for that matter. Put some salt, put some pepper. an egg, and the egg is what will bind everything. Just a little bit of garlic, parmigiano, parsley, and I like a lot of parsley, and breadcrumbs. And again, I'm just going to go in there with my hands because it's the best and the most efficient and the quickest. Now, the Italian traditional meatballs are like this. But if I gave you this kind of meatballs, you wouldn't recognize it in a Sunday ragu. So let's do the traditional American Italian, Italian American meatballs, which were about this size. Absolutely nice and round. Okay. Uh, whenever I fry things, uh, I start with the vegetable, but then I add a little bit of olive oil, just the last minute. So let's lightly flour them. And we're not deep frying them, we're just forming a little crust uh, to add a little flavor, a little complexity, caramelizing, and to seal it. So when we put it in, the stock, it doesn't fall apart. Okay, this looks fine. I'm just gonna pat them on the towel. And when you put the meatballs in there, just let them stay a minute. Don't go in there and mixing right away because you do want them to tighten up, so not to break on you. Another way, instead of mixing, just shake the pot a little bit, get a handle, and just shake them right in there. They'll find us a, a spot. And bring it down to simmering, and let it simmer away, adding boiling water periodically for another hour. Of course, there's no meal, no Sunday meal, no meal for that matter, without a big bowl of greens. Vegetables. Vegetables are very important to the Italian table. And as many as you can 
put on the table. We love them all. Uh, in this case, broccoli di rape. Broccoli di rape is something that uh, came to the American table maybe in the last uh, 10, 15 years. But it's something that we've been eating a long time. And it is just delicious. It's bitter. It's almondy. It's easy to make. Olive oil. And our vegetables, I mean, are only done in olive oil. Put a little peperoncino. When you put the peperoncino like this, it gives it that extra kick. You wash the broccoli tirape and <clears throat> leave a certain amount of, of water in them because that's what will steam them when you're cooking them. I'm going to put just a little bit of the water, not too much. Let me season them with salt. We have the peperoncino in there already. And put a lid on it. And if you don't have a lid, another pot will, will do just fine. And of course, with this sauce, we'll dress a bowl of rigatoni. And then we'll have a big platter of all the meats and a platter of broccoli di rape. Sounds good? Mm. When you put in pasta, stir it. Let's see. OK, we're almost there. See how quickly. I think this is fine. Warm plates. Whenever you serve your things, keep them in the oven. Keep warm plates nice. They don't have to be hot but warm plate. You know, you see sometimes the broccoli that I put cut into small pieces. I like them like this whole, just the whole stock like that. And as soon as the pasta is ready, we'll be ready to serve. Well, we are ready to enjoy and to plate. So I'm pulling all of the meat out, and the meat is served on this big platter where everybody can help themselves. The sauce, we're going to dress the pasta with. Now, the bracioli have the toothpicks in them. You can stand there and pick each one of them out and then return them just before service. Or otherwise, you can do just what I'm doing. Just put them in and be sure that you tell your guest that the toothpicks are still in there. Wow. You know, if there, if there is one Italian dish that really says it all and brings everybody together, this is it. And you want to put a little bit of sauce on top of this. You don't want this to dry. And let's get back quickly to the pasta. I don't want the pasta to overcook. And as you know, you know, I always. OK. The Italian way, you really don't want the pasta to be swimming in sauce. You want it to be sort of just condita, just dressed. And the pasta is fairly al dente. I want it to cook a little more in the sauce. I'm fishing it out, not even draining it. So it's perfect. Those starches I talked to you about are all intact, waiting to latch on that sauce. OK, one more, I thought. Great. Okay. And can you see the difference of a pasta that's cooked fresh and cooked al dente? Do you see how it stands up? How is when you see rigatoni that sort of crook closed down, they've either been cooked before or they've been way overcooked. Just a little more cooking. Okay. 
right? I'm going to shut the fire off and I'm going to add some cheese, parmigiano, parmigiano reggiano, although you could add pecorino romano, pecorino sardo, pecorino tos toscano. Pecorino is the cheese made of 100% sheep's milk and parmigiano reggiano is made of 100% cow's milk. Uh, the difference is that uh, the pecorino is more intense. Mm -mm. Wonderful. Smells great. Maybe a little sauce. I'm just going to uh, far la morsa. I'm just going to make the move, but it really doesn't need it. Just a little bit too. You see, there's, there's, it's, the, the pasta is not soupy, but it's flowing. And I just wish I could. I certainly have enough food for all of you. I wish I could have you here. Uh, it is such a great dish. And yes, it takes three and a half hours, but basically you don't have to be there three and a half hours. And at the end of those hours, this is what you have. Now, let me just taste for you. You know, I want to, you know how I want to share with you. I'm going to take one of each so I can really tell you how each one tastes. And the bracciola. Let me take out the toothpick. And of course, I want a little bit of pasta. Now, if I were to serve this as a portion to somebody, and if you really want to, but this is not that kind of a dish that you have to portion it and make it seem super elegant. This is a real family dish, a dish that really brings everybody together. Now, where do I start? Let me start with the bracciola. I want to show you the bracciola. And you see how it really is sort of breaking apart. It's nice and moist. And that's what the three hours will, will do to it. And it's great. And you know, you want it to fall apart and put it in the sauce and pick it up. Mm. Mm. The meat just falls apart. There's a little nut there, a little of the prosciutto. Mm. And of course, no Sunday meal is a meal without wine. Delicious, nice, hearty red. Now, you know, what does this meal do to me? If there ever was or is or will be an embracing meal, this is it. It really embraces your whole table, your, all of your guests and everybody. So I want to embrace you. I want to invite you to my table. So as we say at my house, tutti a tavola a mangiare e bere del vino buono.